Welcome back guys. Oh we all's good. Today is Saturday the 25th. And yes, I am in my work clothes. But you've got to keep bringing the money in. So needs must. You might hear it in background. The shower's now up and running. Only got two trays of media in a minute though. It's been soaked, washed off. Um, yeah, all nice and clean again. Um, still got one, the last bucket from the bottom tray soaking. So that's still soaking in there. Them other ones had a good couple of days. Um, took them out, rinsed them off and got them in. So that can start that media maturing a bit or at least get it started. Uh, it's not going to really start maturing until until we start turning water temperature up a bit or until it starts going up itself. Um, but I dare say by the time it's able to start climbing substantially on its own, I'll probably be turning the heater up anyway. So um, maybe I'm not going to think about starting to turn it up to any sort of level until about probably, I don't know, um, April time. Um, might turn it up a couple of degrees, two or three degrees during March, but it's not going to be until we get into sort of like April and, until I'm going to start turning it up, and then hopefully by the time we hit May, um, I'm going to be able to get back on to um, growing temperatures, sort of 24, 25, something like that. By the time we hit May, um, so yeah. Made a bit of progress on that. Um, ended up having to get a good fettle out inside skimmer tray. Inside there, it collected quite a lot of crap inside there. We'd just been sat, so I've ended up having to use toothbrush. Um, not to worry, I'll, I'll disinfect it before it goes back in bathroom. Fish are looking well. They're happy now that's running. I think they've missed it. And also, we have had our first few days of free electricity. Um, not been every day and obviously not every day throughout the day, but yeah. Still got scaffold to come down yet, but we are up and running. There's shit on it already. So there's nine panels there, and then on where are we? On that roof, there's another four panels. Um, so each panel is 445 watts. So it's all together the system. I think it's 5.7 kilowatts altogether. Um, we've got battery set up it loft along with inverter and yeah so far so good um, we've had quite a bit of free electric from it um, already to be fair so we still only end of February so um, I'm hoping for more good things to come as we start getting into spring and um, ultimately summer because um, that's going to be that's going to be the biggie uh, from as calculations we worked it out that we're going to probably get most of us um, energy generation from like May, June, July um, and then start dipping down again as we get towards August, September, October um, so yeah looking forward to it um, I put a little screenshot up of um, the app what I'm using to monitor it um, it's it's by Solax um, Solax is um, the company that the batteries are from and the inverter um, you can see, you know, it's got all your monitoring data on it, what you're pulling from grid, what you're pulling, pulling from your batteries, how much it's charging your batteries, um, how much you're using from your solar panels and your total um, load of your household. Um, so yeah, that now that that's on the house, um, obviously all, all the electrical system is being generated um, by the solar. Um, and then obviously batteries when when it's um, not getting enough power from panels 
so I'll, I'll put a little screenshot of that up um, and yeah like I say looking forward to using it What I'm also going to do as well, or what I have done, should I say, now that we've switched over to this um, solar system, is I'm going to try and start to readjust the way that I use me, me, um, what's it called? Me, eh, me air source. So what my plan is is to use it on a on a schedule. So then the air source will be purely running off of the solar setup and so it's not going to cost me out really. Um, so by putting it on a schedule, basically what that means is it's only going to be running during daylight hours when it's generating electricity um, or when it can pull from batteries. So it'll get it, it'll get the pond up to temperature all throughout the day. I mean, in night time, it doesn't have enough time to to drop to drop that much temperature anyway. Um, you know, through at night it only drops by about a degree when heat is not running. So it's within tolerance uh, uh, keeping pond water at stable temperature. Um, so what I've done, I'll just show you. Oh, so before we were just using it on on normal. Um, we were just put in, putting his temperature in, and then just letting it keep it at that constant temperature. But now we're on a timer, so um, it's set for daylight hours. So seven in the morning, and then it's running all the way through while well, about six o'clock in the evening. Um, so they're pretty much, pretty much as daylight hours give or take and um, so hopefully all being well with it set like that it'll be running purely off at solar so it's not going to cost me out to run it that's the plan anyway that's how I'm going to test it for the time being so I'll test it like that um, and see how it goes um, even in a few days that um, it's been running um, We've noticed a difference in in how much electric we're using, and the reason we can monitor that is because our electricity meet our electricity meter at the minute is only um, it's a smart pay as you go top up online, um, so and we've got a little energy monitor as well, so we can see how much it's taking each day, um, and yeah, it's not been using nowhere near as much as it usually would, so all's good on that front. Filter, that's all been cleaned out as you know from last video what went out. Um, my UV's now back on. So you can see that in there, that's back on. It's um, The sleeves had a good clean. Um, I haven't changed the bulb yet, I haven't got around to ordering one yet, but I think I'm going to order a new bulb. I'm um, still not made my mind up about what I'm going to do with my float switch yet. Um, like I said last time, for it is, I might just order a new float switch and stick it on, and then there'll be no to worry about really then. I need to get Miss N some calibration fluid um, cause that's flashing at me. So I need to get, get some fluid for that and get that calibrated. But yeah, at the minute, things are coming along. Um, things are starting 
to pick up and look tickety boo again. There's not really been too much change yet with that Benny Ginga. Um, it has had its first round of treatment. Um, we, with the, I've been treating it with some anti back and then it's had some some tamadine on it so that's still going through its course of treatment um, like I said I'm, I'm not really I don't really think it's going to start showing much difference until temperature starts getting warmer again until um, till the immune system start picking back up um, but I'm going to keep persevering with it, keep trying um, it seems well I say it seems healthy enough like I say, said before it, you know it, it can't eat too well um, but I'm, like I say I'm going to persevere with it and do what I can for it um, you know I'm not I'm not just going to give, give up on it for the sake on it um, I think it deserves a chance at least I'll be certainly happy now that's running again before as well and um, now I've removed the cover from above the pond so that's gone off of there taken that off netting what we were up on there before um, and the reason why I took that off were, was so the pond would get more sunlight um, I felt as though it was blocking a bit too much light out to be honest with you um, and it went weren't really able to to thrive very well um, possibly may have been affecting fish maybe maybe have been affecting balance the ecosystem at pond I don't know I'm just guessing but I took it off just to see if it makes any difference um, and we'll see how we go with it throughout this season so I think for the time being I'm going to get myself cleaned up out here because I can't really do much more tonight and um, get myself cleaned up out here and um, got those parts to wrap up from from cleaning them down um, and then tomorrow I think it's going to be another day getting this bucket emptied what's got this other tray of uh, shower media in and um, get that shower media rinsed off and get that back in bottom tray so I guess I'll catch back with you later guys alright guys scaffold's gone <laughs> um, my plan is to get this fish out this Beneginga um, I want to see how it's getting on um, and get another treatment see um, how far it's come along and how it's been treated um, and also I've still yet to get that other bucket of media back in so I'll get that washed off as well and um, we'll treat this fish first get that washed off and then get it back in and see where we are with it well once I get this fish out um, I'm, I'm gonna put it to sleep um, and I'll give you a closer look at it and show you what I've been using to, to try and help it Right, so I've got that fishing bowl now guys, just waiting for it to rock over and I've got a few bits out ready what I'm going to be using, so we'll flip round and see what we're going to be use. It's just rocking over now, not far off ready. I've got some hydrogen peroxide ready to clean it, anti back, tamadine, a wet rag to lay it on while I sort it, some cotton buds and we'll get this out once it's rocked over and have a closer look at it and see if it's any better hopefully not any worse right it's rocked over now don't usually take long a minute or so minute or two so I'm gonna get it out get it on this rag um, and see what's happening right so as you can see it's mouse in a pretty bad way. Probably, or possibly, might be unrecoverable, but I don't know. We'll have a go. Right then, guys, so 
I didn't manage to film it while I was doing it because I just needed to crack on with it. So it's been cleaned with hydrogen peroxide, it's mouth, dried off, treated with some treated with some anti-back, get it a good clean with that. Uh, dried off again and then tamadine applied to it. So we'll just have to see if it starts getting any better. So I'm gonna get it back in pond now. Just have a double check round the other fish, make sure there's nothing that's showing any more signs we really look like this. Um, I don't want it turning into something that starts becoming something that is hard to get on top of, which we've seen quite recently in the Koi community. We are Mike. So yeah, I'm gonna get it back. Well, unfortunately, guys, I've just had to do the Tancho. Nowhere near as bad, but it looks as though it had a little bit of something starting on top of its lip. So, I'll just give that a dose with a bit of summit. And hopefully it don't get any worse. That's one fish that I can't bear to to lose really. So we'll just have to see. <sighs> this fucking hobby. Well I've got the Sankey in the bowl. Not that there's anything particularly wrong with it um, it's got a few I don't know what to call them like lesions on on its fins um, it's had them before um, I don't know it's definitely not cart box we've been through all this before last season um, I don't know whether the some sort of um, chrysalis from Parasites or what, I don't know if that's what you call it. But I'm going to put it to sleep, give it out, and then them white um, lesions, I'm going to hit them with some hydrogen peroxide just to kill off anything that might be knocking about there. A bit on its nose as well so I'm gonna let it rock over um, yeah I'm not gonna bother with I don't think this one needs any treating me any anti back or tamadine or anything like that although I suppose it won't really hurt um, but mainly I want to hit them lesions with a bit of hydrogen peroxide just to kill off anything that might be there um, all other fish seem okay don't look like they've got anything else on them um, so just the main big one was that um, Benny Ginga, the Tancho. Like I say, I noticed a little bit of um, something possibly starting to develop on on its top lip. That one, that's just a no-brainer. That's got to be treated no matter what. Um, I can't lose that one. Um, and yeah, and this Sankey. Um, like I say, nothing particular wrong with it just a few small lesions on its fins what I'm going to hit it with some hydrogen peroxide and while I've got it out I may as well put some anti back and tamanine on it just, just to just be on the safe side so um, I'll come back to you once I've done that right they're all back now then guys um, put me put all me crap away in a minute so all together I've ended up seeing to four fish um, the Kahaku uh, the Sankey, the Tancho, and the Beniginga. Um, the Sankey and the Koaku, nothing really much to them really. Um, the Tancho, <clears throat> like I said before, a little bit starting on its top lip. Um, and obviously the Beniginga, what you've already seen. So, yeah, I just have to see what comes on it now. There's not really much more I can do.
um, oh, just o hope it's you know, like I said, just just um, an infection that can be dealt with pretty easily. Um, I just don't want it turning into anything more serious. Um, that's not a road I want to go down. Um, yeah, it's just not a road I want to go down. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's about it really. Um, I've got to get me me back in media sorted. Um, I'm gonna leave that for today. Now I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, it's not it's not desperate. Um, my fingertips are freezing. So yeah, I'm gonna get me. My crap tidied up. Uh, get back in the house because our woman's nattering and she wants to drink mech and she's just been a walk down to Morrison's. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think, yeah, I'm going to get my crap tidied up um, and get off in, I reckon. And then once, and then once I've noticed a bit more progress, if any, with fish, any improvements, um, I'll come back with another update. Um, I'm going to keep checking on over the next few days, give them a few more treatments, like every couple of days or so, uh, especially on the Tancho and the Beniginga. Um, and like I say, yeah, see what comes on it. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you in a bit.